Greetings and welcome to Growth Hacking Secrets. I'm your host, Mohammed Siddiq from Atlanta, Georgia. On this episode, we have a special guest, Glenn Daniels II. Glenn is a corporate leadership trainer and a coach. Please join me to give a warm welcome to our guest, Glenn Daniels II. Good morning, good evening. I call it morning no matter what time of day it is. It's always morning. That's the time I have the most energy, so I just tell myself, good morning. <laughs> Wonderful. Morning. Where were you? Let me start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who were you surrounded with that inspired you to do what you do today? You know, I was, I got inspired really when I uh, had an incident back, oh, geez, I don't remember what it was. I think it was 2015 on a flight between uh, Los Angeles and Honolulu. The particular plane that we were on almost crashed twice that particular day. One time we should have been in the ocean. And the other time, they knew we were going to not make the runway. We had to change the airports and go to a runway that was half the size of what we were supposed to be on. So they just felt like, well, be prepared because this plane is going to go off the other end of the runway. After that, and that whole experience, uh, I sat down and started talking with the pilot. And she taught me a lot of things. And actually, what she taught me during that time period was what I had learned throughout life. But right then is when things started saying, you know what? If you're going to make a difference in this world, let's do this. Because now's the time. You got the sign. You got the signal. You survived these two. You know, I mean, we were supposed to be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And then when we get to the airport, and say, well, we're going to go off the other edge. You know, the pilot, when she came out, said, this is either going to be the most glorious landing you've ever had or the worst thing you've ever experienced. We'll see how that goes. We well, I'll do everything I can to make it the best experience of your entire life. But if it doesn't go the way that way, be prepared for a tremendously hard experience. But we can still, most of us still can get past this. That was the lesson that I learned that day. I said, okay, you know, everything that my dad, my mother, everybody's been teaching me, they all come down to these lessons. So that's what caused that to get around me. Then, you know, my daughter, growing up, you know, my daughter, but then watching my grandson, that's really been the motivation the last three years. My folks are still here, and they tell me that he is exactly like I was at that age. And I see the joy that he has for living. I mean, you know, he does the same thing. I remember doing some of these things older than three, but my favorite place to be on a summer day was laying in the grass. That's my grandson. Him and I would just fall out and lay in the grass. So that's my long-winded answer back 2015 when this plane almost went down twice in one day and now watching my grandson and being told he's just like I was at that age. So he inspires me today. What are the top three reasons why do people fail? You know, the top three reasons really is belief, belief, and belief. You don't have enough belief in yourself. You don't believe that you can see these things. You can make these things happen. The other part, the other the second part of belief is that we believe others' opinion of us. We want to make sure that their opinion is good of us when actually their opinion is none of your business. Have a strong belief in yourself. Believe not in what other people think about you. And then believe in the future. Believe in your connection to the entire world. Those three things are the reason why people fail. They don't have enough belief in themselves. They believe what other people think about them. And they don't believe that they're connected to the entire world already. What is your greatest failure story? What did you learn and how did you recover from it? My greatest failure story actually came full circle on United Flight 641. Um, my greatest failure story is simply that I have always believed what other people said. I've always strained and struggled to get what other people have said and make other people think well about me. When you don't relax and when you don't fall into your own thing, you make mistakes. So I was making big mistakes. I was making a mistake where I was trying to fill up a workshop and going with what other people told me is the best way to do this workshop, not the way I wanted to do it. Well, $25,000 later, I'm starting to think, okay, you know, th I didn't, didn't get the revelation $25,000 later at that moment, but two years later, got the revelation of that was the reason why that was a mistake because I didn't have enough belief in myself. Didn't have enough belief in myself. 
plus, and this is where the, the book, one of the books comes from, I was setting a bunch of safe things. I was trying to be safe. I was trying to get everybody to like me and play it safe. You can't do that. That's So I look at that now in hindsight. So that's where a big mistake was, one of the big mistakes. But what it was was just a simple lack of belief in myself and believing in what other people were saying outside of me. What are your top three success secrets that others can model from? No, number one, we've been saying this a lot, belief. Okay, you got to believe in yourself. But the biggest secret I think that's going to really make people happy and, and go forward is to stop playing small. Stop setting smart, safe goals. My book that was nominated for the Pulitzer, I always say, it says, you know, why smart goals are dumb. Setting smart goals are kind of dumb, safe, you know, you, you set a smart goal, you know you can achieve it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a smart goal. Just by the definition of S-M-A-R-T, you already know you can achieve it. You're better than that. You don't know what you're capable of. Stop setting safe goals. Just stop. It. It's not necessary. It's not there. Okay. The third one would be make sure you take on full responsibility for yourself. Okay, make sure, you're, and you got to be a little bit selfish about this sometimes, but you only have three things that you can be responsible for. Number one, you can only be responsible for what you do, for what you do. That's all you can be responsible for. Number two, though, you can be responsible for what you do not do. What did you not do? You can only be responsible for those two. The third one you can be responsible for is your reaction to what has happened. Why would you? Be responsible for anybody else or anything else. You take care of those three things, you'll be able to believe in yourself and you have a much better, grander vision of yourself. So belief in yourself, setting large, being all that you can be, stop playing small and go for it. Just go for it. That would be my three. What motivates you within? Oddly enough, what's been motiva motivating me within, which helped me to change some of the things, the direction of our company, is the fact that we have to help each other. It's time for us to start caring about each other. It's time for us to stop the hate, stop the misinformation. It's time for us to start caring about each other. You cannot sit around. So I'm telling you right now what I what doesn't motivate me is when people sit around and blame others. You know, I had a person tell me the other day, well, uh, we can't give out any more tax help to people because all we're doing is giving it to the immigrants. So why would you even blame that? And that's wrong. Okay, Why would you blame that? You got to stop blaming people. You got to stop blaming things. Okay, I, Much as I hate to say this, I got better financially off during the four years of Donald Trump. I got better financially off through, during the eight years of uh, Barack Obama. I became better financially off during the eight years of George Bush. It's not the president that matters. It's not the president. It's you that matters. So if you decide that you're going to be motivated by what you do, that's motivation. Okay. I can't, if I don't do it, that's motivation. Okay. I have to be motivated by that. So I have decided lately what motivates me is making sure that when things are done for me, my message resonates for another 100 years. That's what I'm working on right now. That's where we're changing everything to go there. The message of Touchstone Publishers and the summit we're going to have in September is going to be lasting 100 years past my time. You set a goal like that. Now, that's a big goal. That's not a smart goal, is it? But that's what motivates me. I want to make a difference and make sure that it lasts 100 years. What is your company's motto? A company model is simply this. We want to present skills and techniques that create a solution. Skills and techniques that creates a solution. Okay. Good leadership. You got to have a solution for it. You got to have skills. You got to have techniques. You don't need the fluff. You don't need me to try to motivate you. You don't need that fluff. What you need is skills and techniques so you can solve an issue. And it'd be really powerful that issue you're trying to solve is a generational issue. In other words, it goes beyond that 
it goes beyond the kids and the grandkids and the great grandkids. It goes on. Okay. But that's what our company model is creating skills and techniques that create a solution. Who is your ideal client? Ideal client right now is in the Fortune 100 uh, companies. These are the ideal folks. Well, it's actually, I'll explain a little bit, but the ideal folks is senior leadership and Fortune 100 companies. We want them to create solutions to some of these issues that we have. Okay, We want them to help and we want to be able to help and we want to be able to lead. And then at the same time, while they're creating these solutions, getting the rest of their teams trained. But the people we want in our seminar rooms are Fortune 100 companies. And, and we want women leaders in the room. You don't have to be part of Fortune 100 company. If you're a senior leader and a woman, we need your input. We need your expertise. We need everything that you can bring to the table, to the table. So ideal clients would be any woman. And somebody asked me the other day, well, so why are you pointing to a woman? You're a man. I said, well, because I have a mother, I have a sister, and I have a daughter. And I watched all of them struggle. Okay, my little sister at one time was voted the top, one of the top female executives, black female executives in the United States. And she still has struggles, but boy, because she teaches some stuff. So that's our, our ideal client, Fortune 100 senior leadership and senior leadership with women in the nonprofit organizational space to put a real fine tooth on it. How do you find your ideal client? Working with you, <laughs> That's, to be honest with you, just working with, you, with folks. You know, um, 2022, we're going to try to do at least four podcasts a uh, a week. We're going to try to, uh, I'm not going to try to take that back. Either do or do not do. There is no try. We're going to do at least four podcasts a week. We're going to really tr upgrade. I'm going to say try again. We're going to upgrade our LinkedIn presence. And we're going to create an online magazine. So therefore, it becomes all inbound. Okay, If you like our message, if you like what I'm saying, you're going to contact us and say, hey, I want to attend a workshop or I want to do this. Um, what, do you, what does it cost for you to come out and teach us? Okay, um, That's how we're going to attain our clients. And of course, the um, referral business as well. Um, we will do some um, affiliate-like business, I guess. You know, if someone wants to sell a seat in the workshop, you know, there, we'll give them more than a fair commission on it. Um, but ideal clients will come from inbound based upon the content we create, the content that gets out there, the presence that we show out there on LinkedIn. How do you deliver a five-star client experience? Research. Research. It was funny. When you mentioned, uh, before we started, you asked me, well, do you know about my show? And I said, well, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I read the questions. But then it just took you like two questions before I said, oh, you know, I did read those questions. I did have my answers, what I was gonna, how I was going to answer them. I did do that only because I just believe we have to research. I cannot walk into the apples of the world and treat them like the um, oracles or the IBMs. I can't do it like that. I cannot walk into uh, the Homeland Security and treat them like I would treat Apple. I have to understand what it is, what they're doing. So we create a five-star experience. We do all the communication pieces involved to make sure that we're not overstepping our bounds or underreaching for our goals. We try to make sure that at the start of every workshop we do, every summit that we hold, that we all know what it's gonna look like at the end. And then we deliver upon that. Everything is crafted for that organization okay yeah i have a, you know i have a flow but that flow is crafted and detailed around that organization i want to know by name people in that organization so i can call you by your name not just say hey the ceo said this or the cmo said this i want to, be able to say you know chris your C your marketing or who norm you know the vice president of the company no, I want to have that presence, that issue. That's how we make it a five-star experience by knowing your industry, your company. How do you convert your clients into your brand ambassadors? By knowing them. 
by actually really delivering on what we said we're going to do. A brand ambassadors come from a five-star experience. When you sit down and five-star experience, it kind of varies. So like when we do our summit in September, that's going to be a five-star experience that is just unbelievable. But even if we're in a classroom with 20 people, that has to be a five-star experience. If I give my all, okay, and I don't worry about whether well, that person right there likes me or that person likes me, if I give my all, give my best, that creates a brand, uh, a, the brand ambassadors for me. How do you handle rejections? What we kind of said earlier, it's taken a while, but I'm getting there. I handle rejections with the simple thought of some will, some won't, so what, who's next? That's why I've been handling, you know, um, workshops. Some will like what I said, some won't like what I said. Then I just change it a bit. How do I get better? Okay. So I used to work for a contracting company and they gave out all these um, survey forms. And I still use them a little bit, but the bottom line is that most people fill out that survey based upon what they feel like at that moment, not about what they learned yeah. or how they're applying it. But I just started telling myself, you know, some people are going to like me. Some people are not going to like me. So what? How do I get better? So I'm able to kind of just say, okay, that person didn't really like me or we didn't connect, but how do I get better? I mean, you don't want to come to the workshop? You don't want to give me the money? Well, why? Let's, let me think about how I approached it. How do I get better? How do you handle an angry client? When I get one, I'll let you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, you know, anger is a sign something else is going on. I think when you really have to handle an angry client, the best way to do it is be a great communicator and listen. Don't interrupt people. Listen. Stephen Covey has, I think, is number five, his fifth habit. I think everybody should write this down if you're making notes. And follow Stephen Covey's fifth habit. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. So if someone's angry at me, I need to seek first to understand why they're mad at me. What, what's going on? I need to understand that. I cannot just jump up and defend myself right away because they're angry. You know, when I was sick a while back, the um, I got angry. The nurse told me in the hospital, you know, well, we got people dying here. She did not understand that I was one of those people dying. She didn't understand that. So living on that other side of it made me stop to, start, stop to think, well, if that person would have tried to understand me first, they probably would have helped me instead of lecturing me. So how can I do that to someone who's a customer or who's you know, angry with me? Why are you angry? Let's, let me understand. Tell me, tell me why so I can really understand that. And then, I, you know, to be honest, 90% of the time, once I really understand why they're angry, there's no need for them to understand me. We're kind of through with it because I understand where they're at and I can make the proper adjustments. We are about to move into lightning round. That means quick question and quick answer. Are you ready? Yeah, forward. What are you grateful for today? I'm grateful that I have this great grandson. I have a perfect daughter. I'm grateful that I have this up here that I can thank and I live life. How do you start your day? Start my day with a, uh, my morning ritual is really quite simple. I start my day with meditation, exercise, and then daily planning. Just three things. Oh, how young are you? I am way younger than what I look. <laughs> and I'm way older than what I look, by the way, too. So, But, um, you know, they asked me, if you did not know how old you are, how old would you be? I'd say about 40. <laughs> what do you want to do when you grow up? What I want to do when I grow up is I want to never stop doing what I do. I never want to retire. What are your plan to achieve your goal? My plan to achieve my goal is to be grateful, express gratitude, and to continue. Be grateful for who I am and be excited for what's coming and continue to build on it. How will you feel in case you don't achieve your goal? Mm, that's not a question. Um, I don't put a timeline on goals like that. That would be setting a smart goal. So 
there. I can't say that I, if I don't achieve my goal, it just means I got to readjust. I got to change my angle. I got to make some kind of adjustment, throttle back down and throttle back up and make that kind of adjustment. How do you overcome a challenge life throws at you? People don't like this answer, but I'm going to tell it to you. I think it's my meditation in the morning. I think when I can clear my mind and just let the universe guide, the day goes by real easy. When I win the morning, I usually win the day. What is the advice you will give to a younger yourself? Meditate. Remember that you're only responsible for who you are, I mean, how, what you do, what you don't do, and how you react. You're not responsible for how anybody else feels about you. That's not your responsibility. Once you have a revenue generating idea, how do you convince your significant other? Probably why I'm single. <laughs> That's probably why I'm single still. Um, if it was a disagreement with it, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer that one. My significant other and I couldn't agree on that. So I, I don't know. Who is your living mentor and what's the impact? Three living mentors. My dad, uh, Captain Susan from that United Flight we referred to early, earlier. And then actually there's only two because I just realized the third one is not here. Um, but yeah, just those two. Why being impactful is important to you? I want to make things better. We want things to be much better. I want the people to, I want us to be happier. I want us to make a contribution. I want this earth to last. I mean, I want us to, I realize we're not always going to agree on issues. You and I may have differences on issues. I mean, I have people that's really come down on me for my why smart go setting is dumb. You know, I do believe that. I just want you to think about it. That's all. So if I can help you think about it, that's the impact. It's important to me because I think that's why I was sent here. What do you want to be remembered for? Making the impact. Making the impact. Making uh, changes that last for generations past. You asked about one of my mentors. And I was going to name him and I realized he's not even alive. Abraham Lincoln. How many years has he been gone? And what has his impact been for generations? Beethoven. How many years has he been gone? His music has had what impact upon generations for how long? How can we support you? You're doing a great job. I think that whenever you put out your message, that supports me. Whether I'm listening to it, whether I'm not. Your message is so strong and so powerful and so unique that it opens up avenues of thinking. And when you open up avenues of thinking, that message spreads throughout the world. We may not know everybody we have in, in contact with, but when your mission is out there and you're living your mission, your company's mission, it helps my mission. We are about to wrap up. I'd like to have a few words about your today's guest experience on the show. Here's my question. What would you say about your today's guest experience on the show? I will tell you this. Um, I like to be organized. I like to be able to just sit down and get things done the shortcut way and not the shortcut way, but I don't think things should be complicated. I think you make it very simple, very easy. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit too easy, but it's very simple. So if you are short of time, your format works so well. Uh, the experience of working with you, we had our conversation and we did the show. That makes life so much easier. You are such an easygoing person. That makes life so much easier. Okay, I know you have your standards, but they just seem to fall in place because your life, the way you, you conversate, the way you set things up are just easy. So my experience on the show, I would just say is flexibly easy. What would you say as a final word? Be. Be who you're meant to be. Thank you so much, Glenn, for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of Growth Hacking Secrets community and our entire team. We really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Siddiq signing off from Atlanta, Georgia. Until the next episode, all good wishes.